Gemma, Jimmy, Ta Tahira, congratulations for the Tower 2 death message. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So, I love these mystery series. I love it. It's, it's so captivating, but I want to hear it in your words on what makes you think the Tower, What what is the success for the, the Tower series so far in your words? I think the success is one, you know, where we are, I think TV is very competitive right now, right? And I think this IP, Kate London's books, they're, they're fantastic. But then you've just got one of the best writers in the business. You've got Homeland's Patrick Harbinson that's written fantastic scripts. But also, I think one thing what, what I like about the UK is that we don't have to do 20 episodes to tell a story. We can tell a real dark, powerful story across three episodes. And we got an extra one for season two. But again, it's like, it's not overdoing it. And I think, uh, you know, Patch is very hands-on and we are as well in terms of we really wanted to uh, tell a crime story in a different way. We didn't want it to be like your, oh, that's a, a typical and traditional ITV, brick box uh, crime drama. We wanted to go in a different direction. And I think you can see that in season two, how different it is from season one. I think we've elevated the danger. It's much darker. I think we we actually get to know our characters even more. In, and again, that goes back to Patrick in terms of the overlapping of character storylines and arcs, but in that sort of natural, believable way. I like it's it's um, brilliantly observed police procedural sort of translated beautifully from the real life detective of Kate London's books into, as Jimmy said, you know, one of the best in the business is scripts in the writing. And I think as well, it doesn't sort of shy away from the realism of it or the grit or the, the you know, the inner machinations that can be quite ugly of a police um, force, I suppose. And, to, you know, to, to not be shy of exploring those, those sort of darker circumstances of the, the, the workforce. So, yeah. I think one just just to kind of tag along tag on to that um again you know giving Patrick Harbison his flowers is <clears throat> is is his ability to also write really um well crafted well rounded characters um because I know that that's what definitely um interested me when I first read the first kind of scripts from the series one was that I didn't just I wasn't just re reading a um a kind of crime drama, police drama, where I didn't know who these characters were. It was, you know, everyone was a, a detective or a sergeant, and I, you know, didn't, didn't know their personalities. When I read this script, I knew who everyone was. I knew, I knew, I had such a strong sense of, of these characters. And I think at the end of the day, when viewers watch shows, that's what's going to keep them interested and intrigued. Um, how relatable are these people and do you like them? I love you, all three of you, three of you and your performances are excellent because uh, because I actually believe that you know you 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 folks were cops on on this series. I mean the cop the cops, the police operations felt so real. but uh, but you as actors, did you have to shadow anyone or do deep research to get the mannerism? of your characters right as police officers? Uh, for me, uh, I played a police officer before and I remember I, had, I shadowed uh, a couple of officers then. And then like for season one, I spoke to quite a few uh, different uh, police officers, you know, actually not necessarily about like the procedures and how they, actually I did, I did. I just, cause that thing of like, we can, we're all human beings, right? You know, sometimes I think if people that have jobs, whether you're a police officer, a fireman, or, or maybe a doctor, sometimes we forget that they are human beings. But I I really remember talking to an officer and he was to, he told me about what it was like to, actually, Tia, it's, it's your scene when you have to go and deliver the news that, you know, her daughter died. And I remember this officer just telling me about how he would handle that and and the impact that would have on him and and he got to go on with the rest of his day and and I think it was just really good uh gig to just talk to these officers and and get a sense that they are human beings it is really tough for them but at the same time they ha they have a job to do and it does require a lot for them 
and uh, and there are good days and there are bad days. And I think just going on from that, it's that yeah, I was that's exactly the scene. I think that I was going to use as an example. I think we we had really great um, uh, consultants um, on set. Um, so anything that you weren't sure about or you know for me it was even just basic things like how to put handcuffs on someone I've never done that so, you know so you know how how do police you see it in movies you see it on tv you know you see it on the news but but actually the physical act of doing that is really difficult um but I remember asking about delivering a death message because I think at first we, we did a few takes and I was getting quite emotional just as an actor, um, because the, the actress I was I was delivering this message to was doing such a wonderful job, and it was making me really emotional because it's it's a horrific thing to have to have to tell somebody. Um, and I remember the the consultant saying, like, you know, you you may feel however you feel personally, you have to deliver some, you have to de deliver it with some form of empathy. Um, but you, you can't allow that emotion to take over. You still have to be, be very professional. Uh, and I think it's, yeah, just really put things into perspective. Most excellent. Well, let, let me uh, wrap it up with one more thing because, you know, with a mystery series like this, because the script is so captivating and there's also books uh, that goes along with it. Do you tend to just rely on the script or you also follow up reading the books? Well, um, Jimmy's the main SWAT here because he's read all the books. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drop Tahira in it as well. Me and Tahira, we have not. But, um, <laughs> but we just rely on the brilliant scripts because for me, I got confused between what was the script and what was the book because I got it all so close together. And Tahira is just lazy. No, I'm joking. <laughs> she, she was cast really late and she couldn't get it all in. <laughs> I shouldn't be answering for you anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did. I read Jimmy's read everything, and I haven't read everything. Pop, undercover, <laughs> he's done it all. <laughs> <laughs> me and Tahira, you know, we don't need to do all that. <laughs> uh, listen, it was the pandemic. I got into my audio books. You know, it, you can you can put it on speed up, and you get through them very quickly. So I, I wasn't I wasn't sat down reading like that. But I I did want to know like my character more uh, like do I get big the, in the... season three <laughs> 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 out. Gemma sorry sir sorry sir out with me on <laughs> <laughs> anyway back to no, I wanted to know more about my character because originally he's very different you know he was an older you know uh, white guy and I was just wanting to understand the root of the character so when I was going to create my version of Steve, I just wanted to bring some of that over into this version, uh, as well as to see what other exciting things might happen. <laughs> I'm a binger. I'm a binger. <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> Most excellent. Well, hey, congratulations once again for the Tower 2 death message. I can't wait for everyone to see it. Really appreciate it. Hopefully we get a season three with the, ne the next uh, book. It's so thank you. We're all uh, we're in talks. Let's hope. <laughs> thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.